YouTube and welcome back. I am Davros and I am a Whovian and today I am reviewing Doctor Who the TV movie from 1996. So um, I did review this in my first and last reviews on the 8th Doctor but I want to just review this now as as, as its own story on its own. So um, Basically, the Seventh Doctor is out on a mission for the Time Lords to take the Master's remains back to Gallifrey after he has stood trial on Scaro and been executed by the Daleks. But he has an evil trick up his sleeve and plans to take what's left of the Doctor's remaining lives as the Master has already used up all of his regenerations and the Doctor is nearing the end of his seventh one. And then, of course, when the Doctor sabotages the TARDIS and escapes, the Doctor finds himself in San Francisco, Millennial, Millennium Eve. But of course he gets caught in a crossfire in a gang war and, well, eventually, after being treated like a human, uh, which almost kills his regeneration and him, he does regenerate into the Eighth Doctor whilst the Master has to take a vessel in order to survive. So, Oh, and also, the Master, he plans to go out for all lengths to destroy the universe if possible to get what he wants. So what did I like about this? Well, um, I remember being five years old and watching this and I remember seeing Sylvester McCoy's face and then I remember the regeneration scene, Sylvester McCoy regenerating to Paul McGann and then after that I was absolutely terrified my dad had to take me to bed and he had to stay with me till I went to sleep so I was that petrified and terrified of the regeneration. Not just the Doctors, but the Masters as well. And of course, the Master was played by Eric Roberts in this, who, um, well, was really evil and probably desperate as well because he had, he didn't have long before the body he chose would die. So, let's, um, get on oh wait I've already said my likes and I'm already on my dislikes and dislikes uh, another thing I liked was the effects this was the first time Doctor Who was compute had computer effects CGI images and this was the 90s I mean back in the 90s we had the X-Files and uh, Star Trek like um, DS9 and Voyager but for one night only in 1996 we were treated to a one-off TV movie where it starred Paul McGann. And that's another thing too, I loved, loved, loved Paul McGann in this as the Doctor. He was absolutely brilliant. He was like a young, refreshed version of William Hartnell in, in, in many ways, but he was his own person. Not only that, but people say this was when the Doctor hit puberty because this was the first time the Doctor ever kissed his human companion. Which in this episode, well, in this story, was Dr. Grace Holloway, played by Daphne Ashbrook. Um, yeah, he like she got caught up in the whole ordeal with the Doctor and was like his companion for that TV movie. Um, and he does offer her, you know, to come with him. He invites her to come with him, but she doesn't. She kindly declines, and that because she's happy being a Doctor. Um, yeah, I loved Paul McGann in this and his performance and it's a shame he didn't get as much screen time as all the others. I mean, yeah, he was in this film, but uh, yeah, we didn't see the regeneration to like, I don't know, a good half an hour into the film. And then we had the last hour where he had to save the universe. I didn't like how he, I mean, the story felt kind of rushed in a, in a way. This was also filmed in America as well, in Canada, I think, um, and that. Um, I mean, this was greatly received in the UK too, from what I've read on it. Um, I also liked, you know, Eric Roberts as the Master. He was just really evil, and he's coming back in his own audio adventures, I think, as well, from what I've been told. <laughs> also, um, yeah, you know, this was, you know meant to be a revival of the show like you know after seven years of being off air it came back for a one-off tv movie which was meant to be a feature-length pilot for a revival which never happened which was a shame 
Paul McGann did sign a form, you know, in case they, you know, ever, in case it ever took off, which unfortunately it did not. But Paul McGann did get to reprise his role as the Doctor in Audio Adventures, which he said were a lot better because you could do things you just wouldn't get away with on TV, and it was all simple for him. He could sit in a sound booth, read his lines, and that's it. You know, the effects and the sound effects and everything will be done after by the studio. Um, but I thought, you know, Paul McGann did as much as he could in the last hour of the film, which I thought was brilliant. You know, he was dazed and confused at first in his post-regeneration shock, and then he, um, and then he went into like his whole like, you know, like then remembered who he was and recovered in that, and he had only min hours to save the universe from being destroyed by the Master's selfish ways. Because he would, he was opening the Eye of Harmony, wanting to like take the Doctor's remaining regenerations, which he almost did, but failed because Grace stopped him and the Doctor stopped him. We also had the other companion, Lee, played by some uh, Lee Chinese or something. I think he was Chinese. Uh, he was great in this. He was like the Master's pawn, and you know the Master manipulated him into thinking the Doctor was evil wasn't and you know in the end he redeemed himself and you know he became a good friend to the doctor and that uh, I do wish we could have seen more of those people in that but they only ever did a one-off performance uh, in this hmm. um, but all in all I do like the TV movie it was it's about an hour and a half 85 minutes long and it sometimes doesn't feel like that because I enjoy it that much. I remember when I first got this on DVD, I watched it religiously because I was so amazed by it and enjoyed the hell out of it, and it was great. So, yeah, I like the effects. I like the TARDIS look as well. The TARDIS, like, the inside of the TARDIS was way, way bigger. Like, so big you, you couldn't really see the walls much in this. And I thought that was a great looking TARDIS. And it was only ever used once on screen, and that TARDIS is the only one that I think is in um, Canada, in North America. The only TARDIS set that's not in Europe. I could be wrong, there could be more. But, um, still, I thought the TV movie was great, I enjoy it when, it, when I watch it. And I've even got the special edition which I've watched too, with better extras than that. And yeah, it's a fun film, and, that, and I do recommend it. Uh, to you Who fans out there, especially if you want to see the Eighth Doctor, how he began. So, final thoughts and ratings. I thought the writing and directing and, cinem and cinematography and that was good for its time. Proper 90s B-movie style, I, I, I like to think it is. So yeah, with all that being said, I'm going to give Doctor Who the TV movie... I'm going to give it a three and a half out of five. So yeah, that has been my Who review on the TV movie. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and to hit that notification bell. All my social media links are down below in the description. So until next time, run for your life.